sink. <laughs> Takawa! Beautifully timed. Takawa! Hello, everyone, Takawa! and welcome to Brick Feed episode 98. I'm LJ. Yeah. I'm R. I'm Meso. I'm Tenebrain Victus. I'm Takua! And no one gets past the captain of the guard unless he wishes it. Yes. <laughs> Amazing. That's flawless. It's beautiful. <laughs> Bionicle lives on, guys. This is Bionicle week. I thought TV. Wait, wait, wait. Bionicle uh, pops in. You can't, you can't have Bionicle on brick feed. Yeah, wait, what? Can we talk? Come on, guys. This is a long about... established thing. Can we talk about how, like, Jowler is, like, flirting with people? Like, females? And, we literally just had a massive, bad. like, three-hour-long love, love is in canon, canon debate like on the, the yeah, other night. So, I don't want to do that again. Me Meso <laughs> well, and so I... Why, why is he flirting, then? Me Meso dun, and I dun, had a, a long debate about love being canon in the Matoran universe, only to realize he was that... there as a debating third wheel. It, it, he, we, we both realized at the end that both of us agreed entirely with the other, we just didn't realize it the whole time. <laughs> yeah! Oh, you guys, are, you guys are great. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's hilarious, man. Yeah. I that's, 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 that's such a huge waste of time. It was. It is. The main yeah. difference we, we have is I like to draw attention to the fact that Leonicle's story was horribly flawed, being written by so many different people with no consistency. Whereas oh all likes God. to downplay it. Mesto, you're already putting me to sleep. It was like last night Mesto. when we both Purple and I to sleep talking about Destiny 2. I, I don't... <laughs> okay! I don't see how I like to downplay it. What, what do you mean down... No, no, let's go back to fight? that downplaying thing, Meso. Do you wanna fight? Do you wanna fight about Destiny 2? I'm, I'm ready to go. You can Spartan to play Destiny! You can do it! You can succeed right now! No, you now. can't. I, I don't think he can, actually. I've heard X talk about Destiny. <laughs> it's also put me to sleep. Dude, that's because I'm hardcore, man. <laughs> when do you think we're gonna get Destiny Lego after Mega Bloks loses that license? Yeah, that would be no. funny. All right, that'd be hilarious. You're not gonna, no, it's wouldn't not it be happen. funny? Wouldn't it, Wouldn't you want some Destiny Legos? Oh, not okay. Happen, <clears throat> I uh, want Destiny Legos. I I did not You're ask not you get to be here. Lego, my ego. <laughs> Oh my gosh, okay, Lego so, Diego. speaking of Lego, let's go ahead and start things off. Did you guys get any Lego over the week? No. No. Okay. I thought about it very, oh, very yeah. hard, and then yeah, I didn't. I did. <laughs> Envy, your turn. You do it. Oh my gosh. No, what? For what? I didn't get anything. I, oh, I, I, I went to the mall, I went anything. to the mall, and I, like, yeah, I stared at some sets, and I thought about it, but, like, all the, all the stuff here is, like, one and a half times more than in price than like America. So what costs like ten bucks is actually like fifteen, and then it scales harder. There's like, also not really anything expensive. of interest out right now. Nope. Yeah. yeah. Very dark period. Every time I go to the store, I see Ninjago movie sets that I want to buy, and then I just turn away in sorrow. And then yeah, I, uh, I was there. I was actually considering going to Toys R Us earlier today because I heard today was the last day, and then I saw Kevin Hinkle's tweet about how like it's completely <laughs> empty and it's not even worth taking a picture of. And I'm like, yeah, sounds like a waste of trip. Pretty yeah. much. No, it's it's rather sorrowing. Uh, I did sell some Lego actually. Oh, me too. <laughs> <laughs> I got rid of about five different sets, and I got awfully ripped off by Bricks and Minifigs. Now, really? full disclosure, I love Bricks and Minifigs. I think it's a wonderful store, especially in places that don't have official LEGO stores, because it's a buy-sell trade store. Um, however, the Black Panther like Pursuit aircraft set from the Black Panther Wave, uh, Master Wu Falls... Uh, the airport battle, the Marvel superhero airport battle, and, and a couple of others collectively, one of which is new in the box that I bought from the store. Those five collectively do not equal out to $81. <laughs> they <No>. don't. <laughs> is Come, that like the retail price of the airport battle? <laughs> that's almost the retail price of the airport battle, not to mention it's complete. Not to mention that one of I them I it, bought man. from and, and them. One of them was the airport battle that yes. you, you gave to them. Yes. My gosh. So, what I ended up doing... The airport $80, battle, you should at least get 30 for that set alone. The airport yeah. battle retailed for 80 uh, there, there we go. So, I'm a little bit burned mm -hmm. about that. 
uh, what I decided to do because I had expected not only to get more, but at the same time, it's my own fault for going to them and not just selling them on eBay on my own. So I decided, you know what, let's make lemons in the lemonade. And I just went ahead and I got some prizes for some stuff I'm doing at Brick Fair this year instead. So, it's the way it goes. It's unfortunate. Lesson learned. Wait, did they give you actual cash? So you, or did yes. they give you store credit? Yeah, cash. they give you cash. They gave me cash. <laughs> yeah, th so, I've, got okay, a local, cool. I've got a local place here, too, that will accept Legos. And, and like, I, I just said Legos, ironically, by accident. But, uh, nice. Uh, they, they rip you off as well if you try to sell it to them as well but yeah they'll they'll, they'll take it and they'll give you cash for it so it, it's really convenient that, quick that money. see that was my thinking like it's convenient it's here i'll just get the cash quick unfortunately i was stupid and did not factor in exactly how much they wanted to try and and do this and i just decided you know what it's not worth the effort to try and fight it get it out of my i needed the space i'll just do ebay from here on out and do small things there if i need anything on eBay tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, selling. I mean, thankfully, they didn't take all of what I had to sell. I have a Technic set, which is worth like $200, which they said if I, you know, had built, they would have bought from me as a set, but I didn't have it built, so they said they'd just buy it as bulk and recommended I just take it back with me, which I did, so that was a bullet dodged. So I guess you could say that you technically still have some money to be made. Yes. Yes, right. I do Sweet. technically still have... Thank you, Mesa. Okay. <clears throat> um, Var, do you want to talk a little bit about your sales? Okay, he's muted. All right. <laughs> can, case... I, can I talk about <gasps> my thing, then? Yes! Okay, so... Um, my girlfriend was in uh, America. She was uh, visiting her family. From Houston, and she was uh, she went to a bunch of different toy stores to look at stuff, um, just to see what prices they had. And she found the um, the Jurassic Park set, which is like a Velociraptor attack something, which was for like thirty five dollars or something. And like the Norwegian um, price, uh, like made to dollars, that is is, is like seventy dollars here. Oh, so yeah. she bought that for me. And it's like a it's a it's a really nice set, but it's like six hundred and ninety nine uh, Norwegian crowns, and that just that just sounds really expensive. And I'm just really glad that she uh, she got it from overseas. And I, I really like this set. It's it's licensed, but like it's um, from all the old movies, and I'm quite quite nostalgic about that scene. So I, re I really Very like this, nice. this set aesthetically. Yeah, it was really cool. Super cool, man. You like it nice. aesthetically. <laughs> yes. My yes, gosh. I do, Meso. That's very not nice meme, you know. <laughs> Impressive. Well, that's awesome, X. Like, I, I keep on telling you and Fwef and uh, maybe not Keeney, but you guys just need to move on over, you know? Just uh, come on over, get like a proper entry, and then, you know, live here. You know, become a citizen. Enjoy the U.S. life. If only it was easy to become a citizen of the U.S. That is true. It would be like 10 years. <laughs> that is so not worth it. It, it. Okay, it is totally worth it. He was just saying how, like, he got this set for much cheaper. Cheaper prices, Var. Dude, the amount of time he'd be waiting trying to get citizenship in the U.S., he might as well just work a job <laughs> and make the money <laughs> yeah, to pay yeah. for the set. But it's not like you need to be a citizen to get that. <laughs> the price of, like, what it, uh, <laughs> Well, that's important. Yeah, it's but... like a regional discount. Yeah. <laughs> but it's not dependent on becoming a citizen. Listen. Oh, man. you're not a citizen? Whoops, you're going to have to pay like 70 you're bucks. Have to revoke your like, I'm just yeah. saying, it's far easier to, to just be here instead of having someone else go over and then come back. That's all. Hmm. Yeah. Well, it's not like she went over there just to get the set. Well, for yeah, him. I know that. My goodness. Okay. <laughs> well, I... listen, LG, you're wrong. Let's move on. Uh, uh, you should feel listen, bad. I'm gonna. Oh, go do you want to tell and... your your selling story? <laughs> uh, I mean, it's not really much of a story. I just sold my um, the transparent Tahu mask that I got back in NYC. Um. I, I I guess that's rare or something because the guy paid like three hundred dollars for it. It's a lot of money. So, 
Yeah, I was shocked. I was I I had it like the lowest bid that I put it up for was like twenty dollars. That was a starting bid. That's I I thought it wasn't gonna sell for more than like forty, and then this dude bought it for three hundred. <laughs> My God. So that was a good day. Indeed, indeed it was. Meanwhile, LJ got ripped off. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> well, lesson oh. learned. Okay. Well, in that case, let's Talk go ahead and. News. Well, yeah, that's what I was gonna do, dude. Till you rudely Slow interrupted host. me. Anyway, so we do actually have about four different reveals over the week that we can discuss. Starting off with seven six one one seven Batman Mech versus Poison Ivy Mech, which was unveiled. And I'll go ahead and for the patrons post the link to the brick set article. Um, not so full disclosure. I'm not very interested in Batman or DC. This is not too particularly interesting a set to me. It's, you know, it's a mech. Uh, however, there are some interesting things about this, rather controversial things. The first being Poison Ivy's minifigure, and the second being the wa wasp, or is that yellow? A firefly. Firefly. His helmet yeah. is unbelievably controversial because... It looks horrendous. His, his, no. Oh, his helmet no, is no, the no. same Ant-Man helmet. No, that's the thing. <laughs> This is actually, and I'll go ahead and get a picture in just a moment here. This is actually a perfect new Ant-Man helmet mold that is new to this set, and it has not been really? used in the new Ant-Man and oh. the Wasp set. This is a new mold? This is a new mold, and it is exactly huh. like Ant-Man's helmet. And I'll get a picture kind of displaying that in just a second here. Come on, R Lego. But not help using me out. it, right? Here we go. Oh yeah, I guess it is. Huh. Okay, here. So this is a picture that someone mocked up. Look at that, and I will go ahead and get that on screen in just a second here. Man, oh man. Now, in a moment, I'll show you what the Ant Man and the Wasp helmets are, and neither of them are this. So for everyone watching the stream right now, that is the comparison photo. On the left is the Firefly helmet from the set. On the right is the Ant-Man helmet from... Uh, it's it's either Civil War or the new Ant-Man and the Wasp film. I'm not sure. But that's not the helmet being used. The helmet being used for the Wasp is that kind of blank one that was used for Iron Man in that older set. The one I despise. And yeah, that, that was, it was also used for the... Um... The vulture. We talked about this. Yeah. Before. And the vulture. Yes, that's right. Um. Let me see here. My goodness, I can't find it on Brickset. <laughs> it's giving me the, the uh, listing okay. for the Lost Brick. Anyway, uh, the other thing is <laughs> the Poison Ivy minifigure is such a massive downgrade from her last appearance in the Lego Batman movie set because. That one had a new hair piece, it had a new face uh, printing, a new torso, it had leg printing, it had dual molded arms, it had arm printing. This oh my one, god, you're right. This one does not have any of those. It is a massive, massive downgrade as far as new figures are Batman concerned. Batman movie. New, new set. What the? <laughs> that is ridiculous. Uh... That's... That's almost like new oh, Lego wow. versus old Lego <laughs> comparison. Yeah, yeah, it really is. Wow. Let me. Uh... Oh yeah, and that that, that oh. old one is so good though. It, may, it really makes me appreciate that a lot more now. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'll go ahead and put that on the screen. But as like, well. I don't know if that's a fair comparison though, because uh, her appear uh, her appearance in those uh, Lego Batman movie sets was kind of like made in conjunction with that she was going to be viewed on a wide screen, so they put a lot more effort into uh, making the minifigures uh, very aesthetically pleasing, like they did with Lego Booby and Ninjago, etc. But, you know, still. Yeah, that just... Indeed. Yeah, to me, it's... It, I, I wouldn't say unforgivable <laughs> for Brad Bob. Unforgivable. It's just apparent how much of a downgrade it is. It's disappointing. Especially when we know they can do so much better. I'm sure there's a reason for it. Of course, there always is, but... It feels but it... very... very 2010-ish. Mm-hmm. feels like we just traveled back several years. 
I was very taken aback by this set because when I first saw the picture just kind of like perusing around, I didn't actually like know what it was. I didn't see it with an accompanying article. When I saw this, my first thought was new, new construction IP. Oh my gosh. <laughs> like new new mech theme. <laughs> Hero, Hero Factory Invasion from Below 2 because I thought that was like Evo. <laughs> it uh, does look like a very yeah. good mech. Uh, aesthetically, but yeah, um, it really it does. Is, it is another Batman mech, though. We've had so many of these, but you know, yeah. it's a really cool that, mech. The moment it's, I it's learned it was a Batman mech, my interest went down like tenfold. But like, if I didn't know that was Batman inside, I honestly like, couldn't tell uh, just by looking at it. It just looks like a really cool, regular, evil-looking mech. Yeah, uh, definitely would like have more appeal if it had, had, wasn't attached to Batman. Mm-hmm. Tbh. Yeah. And then I like Poison Ivy's, I don't know what that's supposed to be. It's a mech. Tree mech. <laughs> uh, not exactly the most useful thing, <laughs> but... Yeah. It looks kind of cool, though. Kinda. Kinda. Yeah. So, I don't know how much this is like retailing for, but... Let me see. It is gonna be... Know. The set has oh, about 375 pieces, and it is going to come out January oh, 1st, 2019, retailing for 40 Oh, wow. Holla holla forty dollar. Um <laughs> we have a whole year before we see this thing? Yeah, yeah. like that half year. Half really, a year. Really early. Well yeah, half a year here. That's the yeah. SDCC curse. They always do stuff like this and it's weird. They announced that one Hulk versus Red Hulk set and we had to wait like seven months. Mm -hmm. It's bizarre. Um, yeah, I don't know. It, it's weird. So on the one hand I think the Firefly minifigure is horrendous. Um I think it's not even so much the helmet that is the problem so much as it is that little transparent thing around his neck that I think is used to attach his backpack. Yeah, well, It probably won't be a big deal when his backpack's attached because the colors will blend in but in that picture that they just kind of have the minifigure shown, it looks like his head is floating above his neck and it's very distracting. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't like unsee it once I've noticed it. Yeah, uh, I, I think that's fine. I think the minifigure itself is actually fine. I think that it's... Yeah. I've seen pictures of him in different media, and it's a very faithful exactly. adaptation. The issue is not so much with it, it's the fact that it is using a helmet that should also be used in the recent Ant-Man and the Wasp set. And I finally got a picture to kind of juxtapose with, and I posted it in chat. Those are the minifigures in the newest Ant-Man and the Wasp set. Wasp is using a completely different helmet, and it's, it, you know, aforementioned the one used for the Vulture. It's also one that's been used in other sets like Iron Man, and there was one other. Iron Patriot, was it? No. Um, whatever. It was I'll, Detroit Steel. That was it. Thank you. And then Ant-Man is using the exact same helmet he used for his initial set when the first movie came out. It's the exact same one. It doesn't look anything like any movie variant. It's a almost a borderline comics variant. Well, um I think Walk mentioned in the chat maybe they're gonna be using it for Avengers Four. That's what a lot of people are guessing <laughs> and they figure and they, they believe that the reason saving molds. And well that the reason that a lot of people think that they're not using it here is because the Bat the, the Batman set comes out in January. And this set is already out. So it, it, there probably wasn't enough time was made after this was created. True enough. I could buy that excuse. Yeah. So. Yeah. All that's, in all, pretty decent it. set, but a little weird quirks. Yeah. No, definitely. Okay. So let's go ahead. At the X, do you have anything to add to that? No. I I think I said my uh my bit. Okay. Fair enough. In that case, we'll go ahead and move on. There was another announcement, another Brickhead announcement. And this time... Can it... they redeem themselves after last week? Getting tired of I don't messing. think they can. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> 41626 <laughs> Gruton Rocket. Uh, this was revealed. I don't know if there's a price point. I don't know if there's a release date. But it is Groot and Rocket from Infinity War. I will right, we'll go ahead and link the Brickset article in the patron chat. There we go. It is Groot. I think they're My good. My opinions are mixed. How so? I think they're pretty good. Uh, I definitely think they're better than, than Jack and Sally. I definitely think it's redemptive. <laughs> um, I wouldn't have chosen that color for Groot 
I thought that as well, but I think that's because like they're supposed to have like the teenage version or whatever. But yeah, still, I feel like it'd be better is. with dark brown. Um, yeah, it it was very off-putting to see that color with so, such a minimal dark brown uh, effect on him. It's not even like immediately like once I know it's Groot, it, it, it definitely makes sense. I can see it, but like that's not my immediate first thought. Like without knowing who the character is, because it's not the colors that I expect mm. to see him in. But it's a very minor thing. Like it is accurate technically. It gets the look, and it, it is a pretty good aesthetic. I love how they have the the plant coming off the head, and the shaping of the the head is very, very, very Groot like. Yeah. So I give them props for design on that one. I think well, for it being really wider. Made, um, I think that's right. an interesting point you made though about it, like how it's um, it doesn't really look immediately recognizable as Groot. I think it, it's one of those that you kind of need to actually get with Rocket to kind of realize who it is. Totally. And to be fair to them, like like X said, it's like teen teen Groot. It is more accurate to teen Groot than actual Groot. So props there because adult Groot gets darker, his wood goes darker. Mm -hmm. Kid Groot is actually lighter. So like that, if I'm being honest, that is fairly accurate. I can't really fault them for yeah, that. Not the same. But the Groot model that everyone is I was gonna say the most familiar with, but is that even true anymore? Kid Groot's been in more movies than adult Groot. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while since we've seen Groot Groot. <laughs> mm -hmm. Might have flipped. <laughs> This might be the main group. So fair enough, Lego. Maybe maybe you know what you're doing. Yeah, I'm, you're I ahead think, of the curve. Yeah, I think it's fine. I think it's good. It looks accurate to the film, especially Infinity War, which I believe this is based off of specifically. I think Rocket yeah, I think is so. absolutely fantastic. Like, I love that they're doing yeah, these, good. these smaller variants. Rocket looks absolutely wonderful. And I like group. I think it, this is a good one. Yeah, Rocket is neat. I like Do we know Groot. how much the smaller ones are in comparison? If they, if it's the same price and the, what the piece count difference would be? They've um, been doing this twin pack thing. They've been yeah. Twin pack. Them. Okay. This yeah. Okay. I did I think actually. When it's a Ooh. small one, when it's a small one, I believe uh, it's fifteen dollars. When it's a big one and a small one. Uh yeah no I like okay. Luke and Yoda that that's that is apparently the retail for this fifteen dollars. Um I don't yeah, have a okay. hard count. That's good then. That's half price then. Cool. Yeah. Indeed. And That's I think Harry nice. and Hedwig was 15 as well. Don't quote me on that. That's good. <laughs> all right. Cool. Very yeah, Rocket's all right. I can't really fault anything about them. The the whiskers are cool. The ears are cool. The cheeks were cool. The the tail is a little funny. <laughs> like someone posted a shot of the back of the box to, to show the tail in good uh, detail. <laughs> I'm wow. sorry. Um, and it looks weird. Oh it my! Looks, it looks very peculiar. I boom. I, I wish you had not done that. Almost. I, I don't want to say Joker. That'd be lending a little too much credence. That uh, insane <laughs> asylum patient laugh you just did. Listen. Okay. Comedy here we go. is a fine art, and I am. You're blind. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> here we go. I got that picture up on the screen. Yeah, the tail's a little peculiar. I think that'd look a little bit better if it were upward. Like, if you can't it oh, upward. Definitely. That would alleviate yeah, it's, it's that. Really, it's weirdly round. Yep. Interesting. And it's accurate, but, like, it, it's weird on a brickhead where everything's square, and then you have the yeah. round tail. It, 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 it feels like you could have gone with a different solution to that, with, like, more, like, slopes and actual bricks instead of the round domes. I'm not sure why they went that, way, that route. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Overall, thumbs up. I like this Lego, but I still will never forgive you for what you did to Jack Skunk. Yeah, I'll get All over right. it. No, okay. I really won't. Nah, I'm sure. That cut me to my very core. Yeah, it's funny. No. <laughs> okay. Um, Envy, do you have any any thoughts or comments? Okay. So in that instance, because he's muted, uh, we're gonna go ahead and and move on. So, oh, I'm finally alive oh. as soon as you proclaim me dead. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Envy, do you have any thoughts on the rocket no. and group brickheads? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Nice. 
in that case, <laughs> we're gonna move on now. So one of the More larger, later. one of the much larger announcements over the week, and something that filled me with such a sense of vindication, uh, was the oh, reveal God. of the Harry Potter collectible minifigures. That's a little bit of a mouthful. And this came with a ton of new molds, new pieces, wonderful stuff, new prints, just a bunch of fantastic short legs are now posable. Oh yeah, raise the roof, my friends. Raise the roof! <clears throat> raise the roof. I pray to why, short legs every night. Why is this such a big thing, LJ? This is a big so thing if, for if me for because it means recall. I was right! For those who may not recall or might not have watched our podcast, we had a little project called Brickonicle, where we were like, hey, let's make Bionicle, but as a system theme. And we made a bunch of mocks, and we came up with like a plot, and we came up with a whole thing from the ground up. And we were trying to figure out if the Toa are regular minifigures, and they're supposed to be bigger than Matoran, should the Matoran have short legs, or should they have regular legs? The reason it's infamous is because we had many prolonged hour-long <laughs> debates. <laughs> We basically this. debated about this for like at least like I would say maybe about eight hours worth. I think of I content. think that's a very fair uh, assessment. Eight hours of the content strictly about. And like a lot of it happened off recording too. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like it, it was ridiculous. Um, but basically it was like, well, we want to give them short legs, but short legs aren't articulated, and that ruins yes. their value or whatever. Some their non-existent like the value. Or so it doesn't matter. Yeah, apparently the, the, the common point raised by one particular individual uh, was, <laughs> was that... It was one guy! It was one a, guy! A minifigure that has short legs does not have any value whatsoever. Yeah. Um, it is really funny when you look back on it, and it's like literally only one person in the entire debate That's the in thing. favor of not giving yeah. them short legs. And I, went, I, I was so willing... I was I, willing to entertain like both both sides for the sake of discussion. There was some merit, but only no, one person weren't. really cared enough to fight against it. Yeah, I was. I was willing to do a discuss it, but there was only one person who was adamant against it. No, they can never. And he, yeah, like, he I, got I, his I, way. I can understand it. Okay. Well, so I now here we are. Short legs are now poseable. Yes. So. Kind of. Now, okay. Yeah. This is a little bit of a half and half. So. In this minifigure series, there are three different types of legs that are used in minifigures. So there are the normal legs, which, you know, they're standard. There are these new molded legs, which are, at least according to Vart, roughly one module shorter than the normal legs. And then we have the normal short legs with no posability, which are another probable one modular lower than these new legs. So... Yeah, there's basically a stud's length difference between them. What so about, the, like, Jedi robes, like, thingies? Um, oh, yeah, that is also there. Yeah. Yeah, oh, fair enough. Yeah. Those are fairly new. Jedi robes thingies. I didn't yeah. know it was new, but yeah, that is there. They're like in the new uh, Star Wars like uh, battle pack, where you get like two clones and two oh. Jedi. Kiati Moody and like the little Padawan girl. I don't remember this set, <laughs> but I know it's like out right now. Nice. So oh, yeah. link it. So Please Patreons. <laughs> clearly, clearly, this isn't meant to be short legs that are now posable. It's meant to kind of be an in between, where it's like um, uh, medium legs, basically. It's, it's for like teenage the closest, characters. The closest they could get while still allowing them to sit down and have like a stud hole on the bottom of the leg, yeah. probably is the reason for this. Uh, if I had to guess, so yes. it works out. I, quite I believe, well. I believe there is a stud hole. Um, now I could be wrong, but I, I feel like they're I'm pretty sure I, I saw something that would indicate that. Mm -hmm. um, so I believe there is one there. But um, yeah, it, it's really cool. It, it's it's a nice in between. Uh, there was a point brought up after we we were talking about how this could be perfect for Matorn, and and that since it is medium and not short legs, it still isn't quite what we wanted. Um, but enough. now it's actually better. Than what we originally pitched, which which was making short legs, you know, um, posable, because now we can actually get away with having Matoran who are shorter than Toa, as well as having children Matoran characters as well. So it's a, it's like literally the best of both worlds. Awesome. Yeah, it's wonderful. We got printing. We got 
opposability. We got it, it just it's amazing. It, I, I feel like I'm so this is everything I could have wanted not only because it helps me be on the winning side of this discussion, but <laughs> it's just a good thing. Now, I went around after I was fired. I went around to a bunch of different communities to kind of discuss things with people, you know, get a little more versed in LEGO general. And one of the things I learned was that nobody really cares about the value between short-legged characters and normal-sized minifigures. It, it's of no general consequence. So that never was a thing, but this is also just wonderful it's just fantastic these are great minifigures anyway i'm not a big harry potter guy but i can acknowledge these are these are stellar so many great new hair pieces and molds and you guys oh, yeah, would dude. probably be better elaborating on that i i could honestly like just rant and rave about how good these minifigures are all day because they, they we talk so... about mad eye moody and how much better he is than the last mad eye moody <laughs> How about how much better these are than any of the last Harry Potter minifigures? Like, man, the Harry Potter series did not get the best treatment in terms of minifigure design. No, it did not. LJ, I've got a picture that I want you to put up on the screen oh, right great. now. It, it's, going to, it's going to slightly illuminate for the uninformed. That's old Mad-Eye Moody <laughs> uh -huh. versus new Mad-Eye Moody. Okay, now this is a picture Holy I need cow. to put up. They squeezed his face together. <laughs> <laughs> um, fun fact, uh, the Mad-Eye Moody is actually, he has a double face. Um, That's so awesome. Because we, it was revealed in the little pamphlet that you get with collectible minifigures that Mad-Eye Moody specifically comes with another hairpiece. You get to turn his head around, and a lot of people are going to be saying it's the first <gasps> David Tennant minifigure. Oh my oh! god! Oh, wow. mm -hmm. That's so cool! It's yep. a Barty Crouch minifigure, yeah, too! Barty yep, Crouch. that it is. That's great! Dude, that's amazing. That's actually really cool. I like that I want that. I'm gonna get that. For sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. Also, yeah, so I got the picture up on screen. Oh my gosh. Like, the one oh, on the I like right. Card's comment, you versus the guy she tells you not to worry about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the one on the right looks like an official Lego minifigure. The one on the left looks like it's fan made. Yeah. Looks yeah, like a knockoff awesome. I'd find on the street. <laughs> yeah. now, I think a lot of these. I think a lot of these are quite awesome. Like ninety percent of them are basically perfect. There's two that I really have an issue with. <laughs> Number one is Harry in the invisibility cloak, which looks freaking funny. <laughs> it looks it's like... It's loading up for uh, me. It's loading up. It looks like he's paranoid, so he's, like, skipped the tinfoil hat, and he's gone, like, full <laughs> on <cape>. tinfoil cloak. <laughs> he uh, must protect himself. I think I it mean, was yeah, a clever... I, I clever way of going about it personally i think it's yeah it's I, I think this is the best way they could have gone about it you're right i'm just being mean it's the only way they could have gone about it it's they did what they had to do it just looks weird i mean if you really want to see him you could take off the cloak too true and then second of all i think this is supposed to be cho chang yeah it is yeah what's is. going on there I'm not sure. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> so, I don't know what happened to her. Uh, this it looks like she's face, standing in her skirt. <laughs> Bro, yo, ow. It's like you put on her skirt upside down. <laughs> her skin tone is also way darker than I was expecting this, it to be. This is something that Just Too Good mentioned when he made a video regarding these. It's It's a much darker skin color. And he, he even had a, yeah. a picture comparison she, with the actress. She has the same skin color. She has the same skin color as Dean Thomas, who's black. <laughs> yeah. Just, <laughs> oh, you're right. Strange. Uh, my goodness. Yeah. So, those are really my only two big complaints. I think the rest of them are basically perfect. Oh, wait, no, I forgot. There's like one more super grievous problem. No, he's not in this Luna, wave. Luna isn't holding the quibbler upside down. Zero out of ten. I'm done oh with the analysis. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> that is you. a good little uh, no, I'm kidding. nice little Harry Potter knowledge you're, you're that is. wanting out there, huh? <laughs> such freaking nerd critique. <laughs> Man. Are these, I'm these such are, a nerd XD. Are these new ones? Yes. I think so. They are new for this okay. Harry Potter uh, re-release, basically. So you're going to find these gotcha. new wands gotcha. in all of the new sets. 
Um, that's really cool. You can like angle them in like any angle or whatever. Oh yeah, you can ha the... hold them at like the ball at the edge. So I think it's really cool. Yeah, uh -huh. that's awesome. Oh, um, wow, what a gimmick. good design. I don't really on the snake. Yeah. It, it, it occurs oh, yeah, to me that was... that there is um, a little bit of news regarding one of the upcoming sets. I don't really know if it's leaked or not. Um, there, there was a picture posted. It wasn't confidential or anything. I'm not going to host any of the images up here. It's not of the set, but it's of what it is going to be. They are going to be releasing a new Hogwarts castle. Um, rumor had it it was UCS. It's going to be a, a D2C, direct-to-consumer set. Uh, micro it is scale. going to be micro scale. We got a picture of the micro Ooh. scale figures. So Ooh. we know Press that it is. F. Yeah, we, we've seen the micro scale figures as someone F. posted a photo of all of them. And yeah, it is confirmed to be micro scale Hogwarts Castle. Okay, well, here's here's the thing, though. Mm. On one hand, it really sucks that Hogwarts Castle is not like an actual to scale set like before. Mm -hmm. But. A micro scale Hogwarts castle means we might actually be able to get like the whole a thing. Hogwarts castle that looks like the whole thing, yeah. Because if yeah. it was like not micro scale, they would never. It would just be the same locations. That it would just be one seen. tower and like the the hall. It would just be a tower and the hall and maybe the Whomping Willow if we got lucky, which is the same stuff they've already done in like smaller scale sets. Yeah, just bigger. Maybe, maybe now we if we get, get a, a micro scale, though, we scale. might. We might get a really cool Hogwarts. Set. Yes. So that actually has me very hyped, and honestly, that might be like the first micro scale set I end up getting. Now, for that sounds awesome. For the record, the last micro scale D two C direct to consumer set I recall us getting was yes, the Helicarrier from Marvel. And that was unbelievably fantastic. So I think we're mm -hmm. in for something really great. Fingers crossed. Let's hope. Mm. Don't let us down, Lego. <laughs> Counting on you. But yeah. Um, anyone else got anything right. to add? Uh, not too much. I really like this minifigures. Trelawney looks great. Yes! Looks great. Perfect. Um, yeah. Uh, Percival Graves looks older than he should, but he still looks good. <laughs> I think Dumbledore looks the best. That's definitely what I'm going to have to get. Good old Dumbledore. Yeah, I gotta love that Dumbledore. But yeah, these are all really great. I'm I'm really happy with the amount of printing on all of them. There's just yeah, they're all very on. distinct. Yeah. And all got so, like their little decals and stuff attached to them. Even the minifigures, even the minifigures that could just be duplicates, like Harry or Ron and Hermione, they all have the same uniform. But even then, they're all different. The the, the uniforms are customized and like, and, you know, Hermione's got hers buttoned up and Ron has the tie instead of the sweater. So that's really cool. It's oh yeah, extra level of detail that they just added there to make yep. them a bit more uh, unique. Love it. In fact, uh, Ron specifically, he has the second known recolor of the Han Solo hairpiece because it usually just comes in that kind of almost lightish brown. But it was also recently recolored to be basically dark tan for one of the other Solo sets, and this is the third recolor in burnt orange. So that gives us three, and I'm hoping, hoping so dearly they put in dark brown. Please, Lego. <laughs> you know, this series actually would make a good little, like, um, Sig Fig custom pack to, like, make your, your Sig Fig a, a member of Hogwarts. Yes. yes. Gryffindor or something. Because so there's so many different customization options here with the yes. same uniform. So. I'm so glad that this is a thing. I'm so glad Harry Potter Lego is finally getting the respect it deserves. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Time to create my OC minifigure. <laughs> My Harry Potter fan fiction. Oh, no. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and move on to the largest announcement, I would say, arguably the largest. It's the longest waited announcement. Longest awaited. My apologies. The Voltron Lego Ideas set. Oh, my goodness. We had known this. I think it's one of, if not the only, idea set that was kind of, when they made the announcement... When it was in review, they said, all right, so we're going to make our announcements. These are the sets that are going to be, you know, sets. And they picked one. I don't remember which. And then they said, however, we're still talking about Voltron. And it is the only one where it's like they, they had to say, hey, we're not disqualifying it. We're still talking about it. They really wanted to do it. Yes, they really wanted to do it. And I know at least very specifically... 
Uh, Tooth Dominoes, who is a set designer over at LEGO Tooth Dominoes on Twitter. Fantastic fellow. I recently had him on my show with a few other set designers. He discussed exactly how heavily he tried to get this to work. He worked very hard on this, and he was a very large driving force between trying to get this to work out. Yeah. So let's discuss it. Honestly, like, seeing his uh, Gurren Lagan box, I honestly can't think of a better person they could have chosen to make this. It's like Perfectly right up his qualified. alley. Put it, put it in the good hands, the right hands. Yeah. Like literally, it's like the, this. This this set was custom made specifically for this guy to make. So that's really cool that he got a chance to do it. Mm -hmm. I just yeah. love that they have the transformation thing like that. It's just so perfect for Lego, and it looks it really so adds smooth value to the set too. And so thought out. I'm so tempted to pick it up. But I'm just not too uh, too into Ultra, so I don't really want to use that much money on something that I'm not just a huge fan of. But man, this set looks good. Like, I really want LEGO to just delve into an, uh, a new mech theme. Cause I really wish Stuff like this would mechs. be so great. Like, a theme specifically around mechs would be great. Yeah, they I had really it once and it was that. awesome. We need yeah. mech stow force. Oh my wow. gosh. Uh, slight clarification. <laughs> uh, Kevin Hinkle in the YouTube chat has said that it's actually happened a few different times. Uh, Project X, quote unquote, still being considered. And some have even been dropped after that. So, fair enough. But um, well, fake news, Elder Strikes again. Listen, <laughs> what the <laughs> heck, dude? <laughs> wow, Elder. Wow. Oh my gosh, I'm, <laughs> I really Direct. am back at TTV. Yeah. <laughs> I I'm definitely gonna pick this one up when I get when I get the chance to. I, I'm a huge fan of the Lego Mechs, and I really want to support that avenue. I want them to keep making more of those. It's the closest thing to contraction I think I'll ever get at this point. So. Um, I definitely want to uh to get that. How much it is really it? Cool. It's one hundred eighty dollars. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's pretty pricey, but I mean, How there's many a parts? lot of there's a lot of pieces here. I think oh, two thousand two hundred something. I want to say two thousand three hundred twenty one. Mm -hmm. There we go. And lots of colors and lots of joints. You know, I think yeah. I believe... every aspect is good. Yeah, I believe that puts the price per part down to seven cents, seven point something cents. Yeah. Um. So it's pretty good. It's a good value. It's a masterpiece of a model, that's for sure. And I want them to keep making mechs, so I think it's good to support. Uh, are you that just uh, like it? Are you priming us with positivity before I we am. to negativity? Okay. Yep, I am indeed <laughs> doing that. Much. I, know, I think it's really important for Lego to keep making mechs, so they can keep finding out ways to improve the mech formula, so they can perhaps <laughs> stop. Putting devote Batman a in certain... mechs, Lego. <laughs> so they can perhaps <laughs> devote those. a certain amount of time and money to Mess up. Put spit it out. Spit it out. Also, to give before mechs you... knees. Before you start... <laughs> yeah, before you start getting into the, the, the knee thing, I also want to point out another positive thing, not about the set at all, but the art design for the box is really good. Yes. So it's one of the best boxes they've done, honestly. Like it's incredibly it's so vibrant. nostalgic. It's so good. It really stands at its end. Like, I I remember Voltron being one of the hottest toys back when I was a kid. Like, they, the, I, I don't know what company sold it, but it was like a Voltron action figure. You could buy each lion individually, and if you got all of them, you could build the, the Voltron robot. And it was the coolest thing ever. So I just, I know that this set is going to appeal to so many AFOLs out there. Like, I, I can't, I, I, I want it, you know? It's really cool. Anyway. It's incredible, and it's an excellent way to pay homage to the franchise. I think anybody who's a fan of Ultron is going to love it. Well, without a doubt. So in that aspect, it being a LEGO <laughs> Ideas set, it being a licensed set, it succeeds without a doubt. Let's talk. All right. Let's talk Tell about it. Yep. Well, it's just one of those things, you know? It doesn't just not have knees. It also doesn't have hip articulation. It also doesn't have ankle articulation so it has basically no articulation <laughs> like one one, huge, one out of though. three forgivable three out of three not forgivable and you're right it is huge it's literally impossible for them to do it to domino's exact quote seriously though no knees in voltron no hip or ankle either with a model this size we cannot do that Believe me, we tried. And you know what? I do believe him. I completely believe him. I believe, I believe him. he exhausted every single avenue possible <laughs> to the design team. So, is it a fault of the set designer? No. It's just one of those things they need to figure out a way around 
this problem. And by they, I mean just Lego in general. They need to construct a new durable type of joint that can handle more weight. Because yeah. when you have a mech, I, I was saying this off air, I was like, okay, so vehicles. Vehicles are cool to play with for kids. You can move them around, you can swish them around, you can also display them if you want. Buildings are cool for display. Uh, they can sit there and look cool, but they're landscapes. They have functions occasionally, but they also have minifigures, so you can create dioramas, you can create a living, breathing city, you can like, reorient everything. That's the purpose of that. Mechs, their purpose is to be posable like action figures, in a sense. <laughs> when you're not able to do that, you lose the purpose behind a mech, IMO, and it basically becomes just a statue. And at that point, have you, yeah. have you made an articulated system-based <laughs> Lego Mecha though? No, nor do I have to to be able to criticize. I know, but I'm just saying <laughs> joints. Joints are a pain. They are Indeed. a pain. It certainly gave me a, a tough time when I was making my Faramok. I yeah. do stability, I do, dude. I do think that it's highly possible for Lego to come up with a solution to this, though. They just they they need to do something, but we just we need some kind of new part to act as the joint. I think they were kind of on to something when with the the um the ball joint uh extension thing. I forget what it's called. The friction joint. The friction joint adder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a good that was a good solution. So something similar to that maybe, or maybe something, scale. or maybe to revisit the racket joint because the racket joint we've had that joint for a very long time, mm -hmm. um and. It, it, it's surprisingly very weak. It works in certain like sizes, but like I tried to use the racket joints for my my Faramok, and it just it did not work at all. I had to switch to ball joints, and yeah. So I, I feel like the racket joint can work because other companies use racket. Can you post the picture of the joint? Your it's the the one that was with Knights Kingdom. Yeah, for all the, for the joints in Knights Kingdom. You, you... All right, here. I'll like for for a mech of this size. I don't expect them to use the, the King's joint. Mech. No, Knight's Kingdom. Yeah, the Knight's oh. Kingdom construction. Oh, those. It's actually yeah, a ratchet are... click joint. Those are terrible. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the little click joint thing. Well, it's that it's that design philosophy that they they would have to use. I do not expect the mech of this size to have uh, a fully swiveling ball joint. I yeah, think ball joints might be too much for that's it. That's a step too far, but. Ratchet joints that you can click into a variety of poses that can be reinforced to be sturdy. I think that's an achievable goal yeah. if enough time I, and money was put into developing it. What I was saying was that other companies use racket uh, joint systems um, for larger scale figures like this with similar weight capacity. It's possible. It's just a, a thing that they need to revisit. They need to look at a, a solution to that, a, a, a stronger ratcheting joint that maybe has less um I, I like i would even sacrifice less movement than the current one for a stronger you know posability like str if it can hold that pose better then that i think that's that's the better solution here because any any posability is better than no posability at this point so True yeah that. i i feel that i mentioned on twitter that this looked like an absolutely phenomenal set, and I stand by that. I think that it looks unbelievably incredible. I think that it's easy for me to say that it is the best LEGO mech yet, just given its sheer size, the construction, like looking at it, it's so smooth but detailed at the same time, it's intricate, like you can see the individual pieces that go into the detailing. It's evident to me that there was a lot of time and effort spent on this. It was a passion project. It had so much love and care poured into the design. So I personally believe it is easily the best LEGO mech yet. That being said, I do partially agree with Meso. Given how much of a fan I was of Exoforce, where the majority of the mechs had articulation in the knees and elbows, to me, having a mech with limited articulation is borderline unacceptable. It does not make for a good mech. I definitely agree that there is some credence to it being statuesque. I don't think that I'm going to get this set, not because that is a deal breaker for me, because I got the fire mech from Ninjago Movie Line, simply because I just don't have a vested interest in Voltron. I'm not familiar with the source material. I've never seen any of the shows, not the old one, not the Netflix show. I don't really know if I will right now. 
So the figure itself, it looks fantastic, but I do agree the fact that there is no articulation is a massive downside, especially you know, in the leg area. Obviously, the arms have some decent amount of articulation. Those look fine. But at the same time... It's just a shame. Yeah, it, it, Exactly, it is a shame. But at the same time, there's so much more to the set. Like, it can combine, it can disassemble into... All these separate models could have easily been released as individual sets. It could have been a Voltron wave. Yeah, it could have. It's and added it's really value. Cool. But at the same at the same time, as cool as I think it is, and I personally am a huge fan of it, it almost does seem like it's kind of just uh, uh what is the word for it? Um, I don't know. It it, it feels kind of empty though, because like the idea of all the all the uh, lions being able to combine into the set is awesome. It's a nice little like idea. But once you have it, and you're not gonna like really play with the lions much, right? I mean, th this set is a display set, IMO. I would think it's a display set. Because yes. there's limited articulation in the set itself, so in terms of actually playing with it, I can't imagine a lot of kids would be that interested in something like this. I, when I was yeah. a kid, I hated statues. I wanted something I could play with. They definitely so, come off as being like dependent on being combined into the main thing. Yeah. There, there's, a, there's a word I'm looking for, but I can't think of it at the moment. Shallow? Um... Yeah, around shallow. Yeah, that's not the word I was thinking of, but that kind of does. Listen, for me, the common response to a lot of those when people say, you know, articulation, you know, articulation, the response is, well, are you really going to play with it? A $180 mech, are you going to play with it? You're an adult. Are you going to swish it around no, the this, room this, and yeah, fight? This isn't something to play with. For me, no, I wouldn't play with it. But... At the same time, when you buy something that large, there's a certain amount of like value in terms of functionality that I associate with the model. What it can do versus what I will actually do with it are two separate scales, if that makes any sense. One's objective, one's subjective. And when this really can't do anything besides stand there. Well, for, for me, the articulation apart. has nothing to do with being able to play with it, the ability to play with it. It's because of why you're purchasing the set to begin with, right? Um, cause like, like I mentioned, it, this is not something to play with. It's something to display with, or display. You can't display it, in and cool you can't poses. display it. The only thing you can put it in is the single statuesque pose. Like the Hulkbuster, uh, like, which is horrible. Like the Hulk, exactly. Um, and like I collect Gunpla, and I think Gunpla is really cool. But I also like to put those things in really cool and dynamic poses, and that is like part of the value of that that whole thing for me is the the ability to not only build it but to also create really cool action scenes with them. And that's mm -hmm. something I would love to do with this Voltron set because it's so gorgeous and so beautiful and awesome and I want to give it the justice it deserves by giving it a really cool pose that you can't do. The only thing you can do is have it stand there like a derp. <laughs> <laughs> and like, and like it, it's cool that he can move his arms and his legs a little bit, but like when you lack knees and you lack ankles, and that hips. limits... <laughs> And hips, you don't have any poses that you can do. So at that point, you just kind of have him saluting and not even saluting. He's just like holding his arm out like an idiot. You know, that's all you can do with him. pose. <laughs> <laughs> so at, at that point, you might as well just keep him standing still as a statue. So when you get rid of the knee, the knees and the ankles, you might as well at this point just get rid of all the joints because it, it, there's nothing you can do with it. Yeah, just just not gonna make a mech. It's um, superfluous. So, so for the record, though, uh, King's Mech from Nexonites is still the best mech. <laughs> so if you're looking for like the best Lego mech for your value, then that's that's still the um, fair the enough, man. Top of the leaderboard, you know, king, king of the castle, you know, nothing's gonna beat that yet. Not even the Batman <laughs> mech. So we'll just uh, just gonna have to wait and see what uh, Lego Batman has to mech offer. got nothing on King's Mech. <laughs> yeah, boy. I have a little no fam. It's the Quick Mech. I agree. Oh my gosh. Yo, Quake <laughs> Mac is dope. That's a really good Mac. Yeah. I don't know. And oh. again, just to reiterate, I don't criticize to the dominoes. I criticize this Legos existing. No, I, I don't parts. yeah, I don't think there's any way to do it. There there yeah, there um, was a, apparently like there's a process that this goes through. It goes through um or like a quality control of sorts and it just uh, he's mentioned this. It it just didn't work out. Like he really did try mm -hmm. very hard to get it so that you know, we could do more. But I, I understand his thought process that he's mentioned on Twitter. 
<laughs> and I absolutely believe him too, because like like I mentioned earlier, he did a, a Gurren Lagann mock, and I, I believe looking at his flicker, that is in a similar scale to this, and it has knees, so it's not like he doesn't know how to do it. Uh -huh. But I imagine that simply having knees isn't enough. It needs to be able to have knees while also maintaining its weight and being able to stand yeah. consistently. Yeah, for and that's long the periods problem. of time. The quality control there is is the thing. Yeah. So, so I get the reasoning. So, so I, sorry, that's it. I understand the rationale. Like I mean, I mentioned during my show when I was talking to Tooth Domino, so that you know he is the sole reason I ended up going to pick up the fire mech. Uh, from the Lego Ninjago movie line. Because his rationale as to why it didn't have knee articulation, it kind of struck a chord with me. It's like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. This mech is cool. Now that I understand that kind of background information, I'm going to try it out. No regrets. Phenomenal set. I'm absolutely certain this will be too. I, But I will absolutely, any day of the week, acknowledge, yes, the lack of articulation is a massive flaw. To me, it certainly does bring down the quality of the experience however at the same time there are other experiences you can glean from this such as the building experience is it fun to build is it fun to have on your shelf is it fun to attempt and the to combining place? and the combining i think there's just such and a Hieronymus massive amount prime, of value here as Ronimus prime says in the chat as a voltron fan what i like is that it does still combine combining is a key aspect of voltron the same way transforming is a key aspect yes. of transformers so it's true. Touché to that for Voltron fans. It checks the box. Oh. Um, does this set have any spring shooters, shape or form, at all? I don't, I don't believe so. so. Huh. Um, this this is really fantastic. Um, Coco, who is a moderator on our message boards and in the audience chat right now, he said according to Tooth Domino's brick set, he went through twenty different versions of the complete model before it was accepted. I can see yeah, that completely, that given me. given um, the combining feature and like perfecting that to the point that it's as smooth as it is. You can see it in like the pictures how how refined it look it is, and like it looks really smooth now, which means that at some point it was incredibly messy, and every step he took was to just simplify something that was just ultimately too excessive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, I I applaud this. I once again I think it's the best Lego mech thus far. I think there is still room for improvement right. as far as mechs as a whole go, but it's wonderful. I think it's it's great. Yeah. Definitely worth the expectation that people have been kind of hyping up. For Good sure. use of Lego ideas. Yes. For once. yes. Absolutely. <laughs> it's not a gray box. It has lots of color. It's not something you usually get from Lego. It, it gets all the check boxes. It's good. This is what we want. <laughs> not Star Wars boxes. Yeah, yeah. Please. no more Star Wars. <laughs> this is the antithesis to Star Wars. The anti-Star Wars set. Yeah. Bam. Um. All right. It's about else? all for the news. Huh? Does X want? Do you want to do an extra mock today? Do you have one? I am a hundred percent unprepared for an extra. No problem. <laughs> That's <laughs> fine. Hundred percent. Um. Actually, if you guys would be okay. There was a mock that the TTB Twitter account kind of shouted out. Would you guys like to discuss that a little bit? Yeah. No, I'm not okay sure. with that. Do okay. it. Okay. You're not okay. Great. Um, so this was something that had been tweeted out. Uh, I didn't do it. I don't know who did. <laughs> it was me. <laughs> Got it. Uh, this is a mock by Poharu on it the TTB message hard. boards. It is called Melody Spirit of Nature. And uh, let's go ahead and discuss so that a little cool. bit. So cool. So unique. The skirt design, the bird, the hat, the hair. For me, for me, the thing that I that really stuck out to me and I really liked was just the shaping of the legs. Like you, you really was able to capture like the the thighs and then the calves and whatnot. Really, mm -hmm. yeah, capturing um, something in the flesh, um, in Lego like this is uh, very impressive. And getting yeah. that humanoid structure and uh, what'd you call it? You know. Anatomy. Yes, that <laughs> he did that well. Yeah. Yeah. This is a really pretty mock too. Like the colors are nice. There's flowers and everything. It's, 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 they blend it's, together it's nice incredibly little... well. Yeah, it's a nice little mock. I like yeah, it's very friends... different from something I'm used to seeing, like super edge lord black armored mock with a crazy <laughs> exactly. sight and a skull. 
you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and another thing is, like, it's combining CCBS with system. The, all those freaking AFLs are like, ooh, construction. Yeah, you the aesthetics with blend the almost perfectly. It's like, yeah, look at no mocks kidding. like this. They're able to accomplish it. It's like, like Leela's mask is used so good in there. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. No, it, yeah, it's, um, uh, it, it's beautiful. It's just a really pretty mock. Yeah. 12 out of 10 would give a thumbs up. <laughs> Mesa, we don't do number <laughs> evaluations anymore, okay? We don't do anything anymore, because you said you were right. going to bring back mocks. Um, I will. Uh, yeah, this, I this, uh, this mock gets three cats. <laughs> three because cats? We don't do points anymore, so it gets three cats. Out of? Yeah. Cats. Okay, we're giving away cats now. Okay. Yep. It's a three cats worth, worthy mock. We can expect your three cats in the mail That's the to arrive at 9 to 12 business days. we've ever given a review here on TTV, folks. How about that? How about the that? The most cats! The most cats ever received on any wow. by the TTV. <laughs> what an honor! And you're here to witness it. Oh my goodness. We've been a good Yeah. Oh yeah, there's... There's also a mock that the Secret Walrus made. He continues to be my favorite mockist. Oh, uh, just already mock? Be... I've Dude, already featured him like 40 times. Again. He he made a Tyrannosaurus Rex mock that is just so cool. I will go ahead and get a picture of that on the screen. Um, yeah, no, Anthony Wilson is unbelievably skilled at everything. This looks he like does. an enemy in Blood Dragon. How does Every, he do this? Just he makes so much quality stuff so frequently and so quickly. I just can't get over it, man. I love everything he does. All right, a uh, little bit of background. A little bit of background on this. The mock is called Tyrannosaurus Nex, and the goal of this mock it was for the Nexo Knights Mech Contest over on Rebrick that they are hosting right now. And he's been posting this everywhere. It's his submission. It is unbelievable. <laughs> it's just amazing. So good, man. Uh, I mean, this is the secret about... to Nexonites making sets better. Just like minimize the orange, use it as accents, <laughs> don't go overboard. Highlights. Yeah. yeah. I can't believe yeah. there's people out there that play Lego competitively because that's what these contests are. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Like NLGs. <laughs> You're totally right. I'm a, I'm a professional ML, Lego. MLBs, and I don't mean baseball. Amazing. <laughs> I think this yeah. is another example of a mock where it's just like adding like a, a nice little display to go with the mock itself is like that extra like mile that you take to really make it feel complete. It's like your chair. Yeah, the, the chair for my Makuta mock. Yeah, my Makuta, the actual Makuta itself was only a, just an okay mock. Once I added that chair, everybody was like, "Whoa!" It was the so chair. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, just adding what, a what display. What you gotta say, man? People love chairs. Nobody yeah, cared just... who I was until I sat in the chair. <laughs> the real chairs with the friends we made along the way. We should mention but that Rebrick is merging with Lego Ideas as well. Oh, yeah, that is a thing that's happening. But we, we, we made a news video about it, yeah, so that is, that talk is about it. Thing. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, adding a display to your mock will make it so much better. So do that from now on, everybody. Until it becomes old, because everybody does it, and no one cares about it anymore. Ouch. Do it anyway. Do it anyway. Just do it. Yep. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. I think that Before fills our Before we end today, there's quota. one thing I want to mention. Mm. One more thing, news related. So we're recording this uh, podcast just for those YouTube listeners. We recorded this on the 29th of June. We should, by the time this episode goes up on YouTube, have already recorded and released our first Ninjago cast for Ninjago Season 9, Hunted. Mm. So if you haven't seen that yet, I would definitely encourage you to go check that out and lend your voice to the conversation. Hunted? And Hunted Season 9. That comes hunters. out on June 30th. No, you have it, Peel. It's a weird thing. Uh, we but just release those faster than we release these. Yeah, pretty much. High priority. Uh, with Tommy, there's something interesting about Tommy Anderson's Twitter I want to mention. Get some speculation oh, no. going. Oh, great. <laughs> Tommy Anderson's Twitter. Every time it mentions, it's mentioned in the podcast, I'm just, like, dying inside. This is good news, I'm dude. sure he this is, too. Okay. He says, on the 27th of June... Awesome San Diego Comic Con 2018 info coming soon. Look out for an official Lego announcement. Hashtag oh Ninjago. And everyone naturally flipped out 
And then he later added an addendum. I was like, please read what the tweet says. <laughs> awesome San Diego Comic Con 2018 info coming soon. Somehow people read, there will be awesome announcements at a panel at SDCC 2018. <laughs> not saying they won't or will, but that's not what my tweet says. Thank so you. if you go back and analyze his wording specifically, there's news coming. Look out for an official LEGO announcement. This could mean multiple things. This could be something super small, like an SDCC exclusive Ninjago minifigure. Or a set. And that's why he says, there's San Diego Comic Con 2018 info. Look out for an official LEGO announcement, hashtag Ninjago. I doubt that because Tommy Anderson's never involved with the sets. I'm much more thinking it has something to do with the show or the movie? See, Question I... mark? I don't want to get any yeah. conspiracy yeah. theories too. going because I heavily doubt <laughs> that thing. Cool. But very, it's very weird for him to hype something up in the manner that he's hyping it up, especially right around SDCC when they typically announce Boy, the media stuff. Boy, won't it be so cool when we look back in like five years that this was the episode where we started talking about when Ninjago got canceled at SDCC 2018? <laughs> 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 yeah, that's... awesome news coming, guys. I can finally move on to other franchises. The awesome news is we can finally bring back Chiba. <laughs> <laughs> the, legends, the Legends of Chima movie. Wait a second. Awesome news, guys. The Ninjago brand got bought out by Verizon. <laughs> oh, no. All the amazing things they're going to do with it. Uh, Ninjago's up. been sunsetted. Didn't Ninjago 90. <laughs> Wasn't it you, Meso, who told me that somewhere along the way, Tommy had mentioned that there was a crossover that was going to be happening between Ninjago and, and some other theme? I didn't tell you, I literally said it on like two two episodes ago. <laughs> well, like one episode ago, he, he was doing the interview with Britt Miller, and Britt Miller was like, he was asked the question, hey, are there ever going to be any crossovers like when you did it with uh, Chima? And he was like, no, because not in the near future because they're kind of expensive to do because of assets and whatnot, but there is something coming in the future that's going to come way out of left field, was his exact wording. Hmm. And... I was like memeing, like, oh, it's Bionicle, <laughs> but not necessarily. Yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> so I don't know that there's a very limited pool of things this could be. The fact that it's SDCC related implies to me it's not set related, but that's just my guess. Could be a game, could be something to do with the movie, could be a spin off show. It, I'm inclined to not think it has anything to do with the mainline TV series, like, oh, look at this episode preview. We're going to air the panel because he went out of his way to make that second tweet that was like almost clarifying that it's not going to be a thing that's announced at the panel. Look out for an official Lego announcement, mm -hmm. which means like a press release, <laughs> which means it, it might be big news or it could be just be like a set. I don't know. Yeah. No. By the time this episode comes out, it's possible we'll already know, but maybe not because SDCC isn't until end of July. So get mm -hmm. your speculation a going. <laughs> Get ready for the big news, boys. <laughs> big news! <laughs> <laughs> One Piece news. fans out there. They are big. They oh, are yeah. of an above average size. You know, you could call them big news. <laughs> big news. These developments are above average in scope. <laughs> Who's big and why is he nude? And with that, okay. we're going to go ahead and wrap things up today. Var looking for... <laughs> Looking for something specific here. <laughs> so, Can't help you, bro. Like, to, like, thank you all so very much for joining us for Brickfeed today. Uh, we're almost episode 100. We're like two episodes Yo, what away up? from. My name's it. Big. No, no, stop. Please. How's it going, y'all? <laughs> um, Anybody seen my pants? I did very quickly, <laughs> very quickly wanted to mention uh, before we wrap up. I was recently on the Just Too Good podcast or the There's Just Too podcast, and um, <laughs> that episode that I'm on has come out now. It's public. If you want to know why I was fired, I highly go recommend you go check that episode out. <laughs> Cause, oh, um, God, just dropping that ball oh, in there. Oh, wow, okay. We, uh, yeah, that's what we discuss. The truth is out there. It's finally been revealed. I highly recommend it. And okay. we also we also chat <laughs> we also chat about my near-death experiences or the lack thereof. And uh, it's oh, a good time. Okay. <laughs> or the lack thereof. <laughs> the lack thereof. <laughs> 
gonna be it for Brixie. On my episode, I'm gonna discuss all the murders that have committed. <laughs> Thanks for listening. But uh, I am the yeah. person. Uh, excuse me, I am the host. Thank you. <laughs> no, okay. Well, then do your job. <laughs> so, go check it out. It's a good time. Thank you, Just Too Good, for having me on. All right, so thank you all for listening. I hope you've had a good time. Remember, BrickFeed is usually every other week, but we try to do our best to announce when it is in the Patreon chat, and you can get access. There's been a lot of news recently, so we've done it like three times in a row. <laughs> yeah, no kidding, right? Um, you can get access to our live Patreon chat pledging at the very least one dollar a month over on patreon patreon slash the ttv channel we are currently working our way toward bringing ttv shirts back and we're getting ever so closer to that goal every single time please passes. the price of a pencil or a candy bar will net you the chance to get shirts <laughs> help us it is also where we announce when we're going to be doing podcasts and or game nights, which we will do at least somewhat infrequently. And you can have access to our live studio audience, so no delay on that. So thank you all so very much for listening. We appreciate your viewership and you in the comments. Uh, this week, we're going to go ahead and shout out a patron. And you know what? For once, I'm going I'm to be nice to a longtime patron of ours. He, he's been here through thick and thin, even though he did drop out for a time when I was fired, which I appreciate. But he's always there, allows people to oh slip boy. on him. It's Pilacara. We appreciate you, buddy. Even though we're hard I on you, because even though we're hard on you, because you're a little bit of a young squirt. He's the worst. We appreciate you being here, and we're glad that you're yeah, with us. Squirt. Pil, can we have a rematch? Oh, when no. like Wrecking Ball comes out in regular Overwatch, <laughs> can I fight you as <laughs> Hammond? <laughs> Oh no. That's gonna be it for Brickfeed. Russ is gonna come in yeah. like a wrecking ball. So thank you all so very much. I'm LJ. I'm big. <laughs> I'm Mesa. <laughs> I'm trying to braid Victus. I'm Redrick's Claymore. <laughs> yeah, that's the job! Yo, I'm still looking for my pants. <laughs> no, I forgot what you said. Where's my pants? Where's Where my bones? pants? Where's my pants? No, no, please don't. Uh, 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 uh. All right, I should have had this plane earlier. Thank you all so very much for listening. We'll see you all next time. Hashtag LJ for Big Oh my God. How did this happen him. to me? Back to the pool. No, 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 no. no. Donate to the Patreon. He's nice and warm. To help Var get some pants. Give us money. My name's Remember Big. Remember to uh, check <laughs> us out on Vessel? No, don't do that. We recommend Brick by Brick something something. We recommend uh, Brick we'll by Brick how like a rewrote the rules of innovation and conquered the global toy industry. <laughs> oh, there's bricks in it. Oh. <laughs> I love